to re-emphasize the importance of this course and the basis and the baseline for this course. And I told you very clearly last week that I have two critical purpose and passion for teaching this course. Number one is to make sure that everybody gets a very good grade. No two ways about it. It's not difficult. It's not, it calls for a lot of reading. It calls you to be very diligent with a few things that we do, especially in this case where this course is not a core, core area in your profession. Midwife, nurses, entrepreneurship should not be part of your game. But Garden City has taught it wise that everybody needs to understand what entrepreneurship is and everybody needs to understand what it takes to start a business anyhow. Okay. So the first passion for me is to make sure everybody gets a very good grade. But the second most important passion for me, the most important for me is for everybody to understand the nitty gritties, even though the nitty gritties, the basis of starting something by the side, so starting something because either you like it or not, one day, one time, you're going to go on pension. And when you go on pension, what are you going to do? Some of you may have 10 years to go on pension. Some of you might have five years to go on pension. Some of you might have six, 10, 20, 30 years to go on pension. When you go on pension, what are you going to do? You have had years of experience, more than 10, 15, 20, 30 years of experience as a midwife or as a nurse. You have the skills to do whatever you are supposed to be doing as a profession. So if you're a nurse, you are very skillful in nursing. If you're a midwife, you are very skillful in nursing. After 60 years, when the government asks you to go and stay home, what are you going to do with those skills and experience you have gathered over the years? My passion for you guys is to see what we can do together throughout this whole semester, that you understand the basis of transforming your skills and your experiences into a business that one day when you decide to go on retirement, you can comfortably go to resign and go straight into your own business and live happily thereafter. But most importantly, most importantly, apart from you, you being able to even retire into this, if you take this course very seriously, you will notice that you'll be able to even start something now that will get you some additional income to supplement the current income that you are currently making. On average, you guys are taking about 3,000, 3,200 Ghana cities a month. Technically, it might, it might not be enough to take care of the family. But assuming you have a side business also, that's giving you another 3,000 Ghana cities. That gives 6,000 Ghana cities. I'm sure your lifestyle will be different. They'll be happy in the home. Kids will be happy. Kids will go to good school. Probably do better things with yourself than just taking the current salary. So my real passion is for you to make sure that you are able to transform your experience, your years of experience, as well as your skills into a very profitable venture. Even not in the same profession, a professional area as a nurse or as a midwife, you should be able to do something with your life right after, after this course. And most importantly, eventually when it's time for you to retire, you should be able to go and retire into your own business and live happy, healthier, wealthier thereafter. If this sounds exciting for you, please say yes in the chat box. If it sounds exciting, your your sound exciting to you, please type a yes in the chat box. All right, thank you very much. I see a lot of yeses. Yes, so oh, yes, 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 yes. Great, thank you. All right, so my name is Shinobu Kuria, and I'm going to be your your lecturer for this course. Uh, it's going to be very interactive. It's going to be very practical. No flaps, no theories. Of course, I'm going to talk theories, but. The theories, I mean, I'm not going to talk about, tell you about things that I'm just, I've just read in books and I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you things that I've lived and I'm actually living now. How I started about nine years ago up to today, having my side business and teaching full-time in university, just like you. How did I transition or how did I even keep two jobs at the same time? And I'll tell you, it's not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy if you want to go this uh, trajectory that I'm telling you. It's not going to be easy. This path is very stressful. This path is very... A challenge and it demands a lot from you, but you have to take the bull by the horn and say, Yes, I can do it and I want to do it. I started teaching at Garden City. Um, currently, myself, Madam Krista, and Mr. Dusey, and some of the few other people, Dr. Osman, are the oldest lecturers on, at, at Garden City, meaning oldest not in terms of age, but oldest in terms of people who have really, really served Garden City. I can confidently tell you that me, I'm proud to be one of them. I've been at Garden City for more than 14 years. When the school started, we were only 150 students, 150 students. And I remember very well how salary was even an issue. At a point where we could, they could not even pay salaries. But today, we thank God for how far he has brought us. So I know inside out of Garden City. I know inside out. And um, what, we, what I want to do is to, apart from doing the academic theoretical stuff that we'll be doing, which is which my Monday that I'm supposed to deliver to you, we are going to we'll veer off once in a while to even invite some of my very close friends who are also in the same space to come and share their experiences with you as far as how they were able to start their businesses, even though they had their full-time job, how they managed to do that. They will come and share some experience with us. 
I would also invite some of my friends also in um, in specialized areas to also come and share experience. I make it as holistic as possible. What I my desire is to make sure I give you 360 degrees um, um, teaching so that we can have a, a comprehensive understanding. Yeah. Of what you're okay. All right. Life challenges. Life challenges. What are some of the issues that we find in life right, right now? Life has become very challenging. And little I say about those things, the better. Number one, increasing desire for many to start and manage their own businesses. People, many people want to start their businesses, especially in your health sector. You see a lot of nurses, midwives, doctors, the pharmacists, all these guys trying to have a side business. Why? Because they desire to get jobs, they desire to get some side business to take care of, to supplement their current income and probably retire in one day is very high. But unfortunately, the failing rate, the, the failure rate of most of these businesses is very, very high. Very, very, very high. And I'm telling you that if you look at the rate at which pharmacy shops are being opened around everywhere in this country, give yourself the next three years, a lot of them are going to fold up. Because I'll come to teach you that many of these pharmacy shops or many of these clinics or hospitals don't even know where, where, where they're breaking point. They're not systems, they're not structures. So as a result, they operate because they think that well, I'm a pharmacist, I'm a medical doctor, I'm a gynecologist, I have money, I have access to bank loans, so I'm taking bank loan and um, I've opened a, a business. Yes, you are good to do that, but unfortunately, there is a formula to build a business. Just as there's a way to uh, give injection, upper outer quadrant, in the same way, there's a formula to build a business. Unfortunately for us in our academic curriculum, we don't usually, people go, who go into specialized areas are not actually exposed to another side of how to build a business. So you, you are a midwife, you know how to give, deliver babies. You are a nurse, you know how to take care of patients. You are a medical doctor, you know how to take care of patients. You are a gynecologist, you are able to help women and many people to give birth to babies. But what does it take to transform that, that idea into a viable venture? That's why I'm here to help you. Okay? All right, so need, people need additional income. People desire to pursue their own dreams. There are a lot of people who have specialized skills, who have some, some gifts that they really want to transform into business. But unfortunately, they are unable to do that because the they, they, crafts or the skills to transform that into a, into a business are not there. So technically, they struggle. Okay? So even though they have the ideas to do that, they are not able to do that. Point number two, limited and keenly competed, comp uh, competed corporate jobs. I'm sure all of us know that years ago, if anybody wanted to uh, go, go went into any of these health professional areas, as soon as you finish school, a job is made available to you. But unfortunately, today it's not like that anymore. People finish school, they finish their, their essential, and they stay home for years before they're even posted. So it means that even though some jobs are available, they are highly competitive. So it takes the person with the extra skills, the extra experience to be able to get a job that are available. Of course, people talk about whom you know and all those. I believe that. But the point is that how skillful are you to be able to, to assess any lucrative job that comes your way as far as your profession is concerned? So indeed, there are jobs available, but it's highly competitive. You need to put yourself out there and get, make sure that you are able to do the right things and get it done. The third thing is an increased desire for freedom from corporate job. A lot of people are tired of doing nine to five jobs. A lot of people. A lot of people. I mean, some, some people wake up to go to work in the morning and as if they're going to fight somebody else. They are, they are just not happy because they're tired of working in a corporate environment. Too much politics, too much nepotism, favoritism, all kinds of things happening at the workplace. So people who are going to work, to get, they really want to go to work, but the work environment is so toxic to the point where they don't really even want to go to work. So what do you do? And because of the fear of going to these places, they wish that they have something else to do, but unfortunately they don't have it. So they, can't, they have to stay in this. And eventually they are stressed up. They don't perform. They are not happy. And all kinds of things happen to them. And eventually they retire at 60. They haven't saved enough money. They don't have any investment anywhere. They retire and they're in trouble. This thing should be the thing of the past. And I will encourage you that I, as, as we go through this course, please stay with me. Stay with me. Let me see how I can help you. Because if, if there's anything else you can do, I believe strongly in my heart that the fastest and the easiest and the most sustainable way to get people out of poverty and money stress and live happy, healthier, worthier life is to expose them to the power of entrepreneurship. Again, I'll say this. The fastest, the easiest, and the most sustainable way to get people out of poverty and to get people to live healthy, healthier, and wealthier life is to expose them to the power of entrepreneurship. 
How do we do this? It's just a matter of just we exposing some of these things and eventually, gradually, we'll be able to get you guys to get to what we want to do. So that's why this course has been introduced to nurses and midwives, PA, dental therapy, medical laboratory technology, for you guys in the health sector to understand that, yes, government jobs are available. If it, if it becomes available, you take it. But if it doesn't become available, don't put your hands on your head and start crying because there's no job coming in. You can do something with yourself. And that's what I want to take you through all this. And finally, high cost of living and life frustrations. This one, let him, I say about it better. Cost of living has become very, very expensive. So now if you are taking just about 3,000 Ghana cities and your husband is also a nurse and he's not taking 3,000 Ghana cities, it means that household income total is uh, 6,000 Ghana cities. You have three kids, they go to average, they, are not go, they don't go to Montessori school because that can pay for Montessori school technically. So you go to an average school, how will you take care of these three kids plus your rent, plus your bills and all that, and let alone going to build a house or buy a car? This is stressful. This is very stressful. So when I tell you that my passion for teaching this course, not just for you to make your first grade or make good grades, but to be able to start something for yourself, I know what I'm talking about. And I'm going to share my experience with you based on that. So basically, we go to school to get better lives. And after school, we are supposed to have two things. Either we start our own businesses or we work for somebody else called employment. So when you work for someone else, it's called employment. And when you work for yourself, you're able to start something by your side or you own your own business, you are an entrepreneur. This is not a reality today. Because statistically, it was shown that only 18.6% of people who go to university are able to start their own businesses. And only 32.4% get full-time lucrative jobs. I mean, people get jobs, all right, but if you look at the skill set a person has vis-a-vis -vis how much they are paid working with that kind of skill, it's only less than 50%, less than 40% actually. So what happens to the rest of the people? Unemployment. So it's not surprising that people finish nursing, midwifery and all that, and they still stay because they are part of the unemployment game. The 34% who are employed are already working, waiting and hoping that other people would also get the employment. The world is changing. Therefore, we must change as well. How do we change? We change by building our capacity. We change by mental transformation. We change by changing our mindset from government, government, government to me, myself, trying to get something for myself. Okay? All right. So what are we going to do? We are going to walk through this entrepreneurship stuff. The employability part that you are, that, that you are there already. But again, there's something about the employability part that if you take it seriously, you can also become very... There are two things in entrepreneurship. There are two things. So there's what we call entrepreneurship, which we are talking about this semester, and also what we call intrapreneurship. Entrepreneurship, we are going to talk about that. Entrepreneurship is when you, the individual, you are, you are on the, the, the employability path. You are employed to work for somebody else. But you work as if the job belongs to you. You are working as if the business belongs to you. Even though it's a government sector, even though you, someone has employed you as a locum staff to work for them. You are working as if you are an entrepreneur. You are working as if the business belongs to you to the point where people can even say, and you want to help or does the job belongs to your parents? That's why you're working like that. And I'm sure many of us have heard this before. Then you are giving your best out to work for the company because you feel that it's your contribution that you can make to this person's business. And people are laughing at you. People are, people are mocking you because they think that you are wasting your time. When you get to the point where you take the job as yours, even though it's not yours, you are called an entrepreneur. There's joy to entrepreneurship because I know people who have done their jobs so well, their bosses and their CEOs have seen them working so well that they are given good position, they are paid so well that they never thought about entrepreneurship. They never thought about starting their own business because they have worked so well, they have been paid so well to the point where they have invested their money into assets that are giving them incomes that are even sometimes even more than how much they are paid working for somebody else. So it can be an entrepreneur and you can be an entrepreneur. Both ways work. So currently, if you are working full-time in the government sector, you are working full-time in a Christian hospital or whatever hospital it is, that is shark, chip compound, whatever it is, please work as if the business is yours. That's entrepreneurship. When time allows us in this semester, I'm going to walk you through my seven-step strategy to become an entrepreneur, the most paid entrepreneur in any organization. The seven critical steps to become an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur in your organization. So, class, please write it down somewhere else. And towards the end of the semester, please remind me. I want to take you through that as well. What does it take to become an entrepreneur? What does it take to put yourself out there in such a way that people will start looking for you to give you jobs? 
what do you need to do to be poached? And I'm sure you know what poaching is. What do you need to, for somebody to come to you and say, please, I want to bring you to my company. How much are you paid here currently? You tell the person, I'm paying 3,000 cities. The person says, I'll pay you 10,000 Ghana cities. You must get to the point where people will start looking for you to fetch you to bring you to their businesses. At that point, they have seen the entrepreneurial spirit in you to the point where they know that if you come into the organization, you dramatically transform what they're doing. How do you take yourself to that level? I have the seven critical steps to become a successful entrepreneur in any competitive job environment. So please, class reps, write it down somewhere. Remind me for me to do that for you towards the end of this semester. Okay. All right. So, but basically, this semester, we're talking about the entrepreneurship, the ENT. The entrepreneurship is I N T R A P R E N E U R. Entrepreneurship, um, S H I P, whatever. But this semester, we're talking about the entrepreneurship, E N T R E. P R E N E U R S H I P. All right. I saw um, your hands up. Please go ahead. Um, I think it was Rebecca. Yes, sir. sir. It's because I wasn't getting the differences with the. It's very fast for me. Ah, okay. I was speaking fast, right? I'm sorry. Yes, please. I was speaking a little bit. I get very passionate about these things. I'm sorry. So please draw my attention anytime you find that I'm going too fast for you so that I don't rush to do say things. All right. So basically, what I'm saying is that when you talk about pathway to health prosperity for you guys in this health sector, there are two ways. It's either you become an entrepreneur, E-N-T-R-E-P-R-E-N-E-U-R-S-H-I-P, entrepreneur. I mean, people pronounce it separate differently, um, entrepreneurship, entrepreneur and all that. I, I don't know the right pronunciation for it, but I, I use the entrepreneurship for it. That is when you own your own business. We'll talk about that next semester. But entrepreneurship is somebody who is employed by somebody else. So for example, you have been employed to work at Confanoche. Yes, so you are an employee to Confanoche. But even though you're an employee, you, are, you, are, you have told yourself that, yes, I work for the government, all right, but this job is my job, it's my business. So let me do this job as if it's my own business. So you go way far and beyond your normal call. It's not that you're going to just press course other department and all that, but as far as your midwifery job is concerned, as far as your nursing job is concerned, you are working so well that people see it. People see and feel that this lady is different. This guy is different. And I'm sure some of you have got to a point where there are patients, when they come to the clinic, they ask for specific they ask for specific nurses or doctors or uh, midwives. So, oh, uh, why is that fair lady that sit at that corner? And we even able to tell this, tell this patient that the person didn't come to work today. It's very likely that this person will leave and go because they didn't meet that person. It means that this, this, this particular staff member is doing something so well that the patients or the customers or the people coming to that facility have seen so, something so unique about this, this, this staff that they really are connected with this person. When you get to that level, you get to that level, you are called an intrapreneur. That's where the I N T R E R R I R sorry, I N T R A intra. You are inter intra the business. That's a clear difference between the two. But as I said, the classroom should remind me toward the end of this semester. Let me walk you through my seven-step strategy to become a successful intrapreneur in any competitive job environment. Okay. All right, any questions? Any questions up to this point? Yes, I've not moved my screen. I'm going to move it now. All right. All right. So along the line, you can raise your hands and I will I would answer any question that you have as far as this, this is concerned. All right. So what is entrepreneurship? Um, I would like anybody, please, if you want to volunteer to read, kindly raise your hands and read for me. Raise your hands and let me call you to read what you see on your screen for me, please. Any volunteer? All right, Grace, go ahead. Um, okay. Um, what is entrepreneurship? It says there's the ability to identify a need or a problem in society and organize the needed resources. Example, money, people, technology, to create a solution and package and package it for a specified target customer in an exchange of reward in the face of risk of uncertainty. All right. Thank you very much, Grace. 
All right, so what is the yeah. Oh, where to take that? All right, so I'll keep muting my people till I uh, let me. Okay, so what is entrepreneurship? The test you see on your screen basically says that it's the ability to identify a need or a problem in society and organize the needed resources, that is money, people, technology, to create a solution and, a pa and package it for a specified target customer in an exchange of reward in the face of risk and uncertainty. Very simple definition, very straightforward definition. Of course, when you go into literature, there are various forms of, um, uh, various ways that people define entrepreneurship, but for me, this captures almost everything that concerns entrepreneurship. So the first thing is that is the ability to identify a need or a problem. So long as you and I are living on this planet, Earth, there are problems everywhere. Every single day, there's a problem that somebody needs a solution for. Every single day, there are opportunities around us. Every single day, there's something that bothers somebody that they need somebody's help to be able to get out of that problem or that, that challenge. The world is calling for solutions. The world is calling for a lot of solutions to a lot of problems. Many, many, many times. I remember the professor who taught us entrepreneurship. The first question when he was talking about problems was that he asked us, did we all bath before we come to class? We said yes. And then he asked us if we use soap, we said yes. Did you use clean water or dirty water? We said we use clean water. And he said, did we use towel to clean ourselves? We said yes. And he said, if why do we clean ourselves? Then I actually raised my hand and said, we wash with clean water, we wash with soap because our skin is so dirty that we have to clean it off. And he said that if we use clean water and use soap to wash ourselves, how then do we get our towels dirty all the time? The class was quiet. The class was quiet because it was a deep thinking thing that the guy put on us. Because if you actually big, took bath, took your bath, and then you used soap, and you didn't use dirty water, but you used, used clean, clean water, to wash yourself, to clean yourself, and then eventually use the towel to clean yourself, to just dry yourself out of the water, and they still get the, the towel still got dirty. It means that there's issues about dirt on our skin is not even solved yet. The analogy from what he was trying to say is that there are problems every single day that we find ourselves in. And the people who are able to solve these problems become what we call the entrepreneurs, and we're split that as we go along with this. So once we identify the problem, which is one of the stages that we are going to go to, that then that individual who has who has identified this problem or this challenge or this opportunity must then look for resources. And again, unfortunately, resources are very, very limited. Nothing is in abundance now. Everything that we need to solve this problem is highly limited. Money is limited because maybe many people are saying that they haven't started a business because they think that you don't have money. It is true, but it's not true. Land, trouble. Even the people to even help you to work to help you to build this business that you want to build, it's even trouble. Somebody said to me that, TK, it's not about the fact that you can't build a business. We have the money to build a business, but who would take care of the business for you? So even people, human beings who take care of the business is even limited. Technology, okay? So the point here is that irrespective of the limited resource that we have available, if this person who has identified this opportunity or this problem and wants to solve it, is able to organize somehow these limited resources and then put them into a useful solution. Use the limited resource to create a solution in terms of a product or in terms of a service and then give to this person or to solve this problem. That person is doing something well. And as a result of that, we must reward them because the stress and the trouble the person has gone through demand that we also appreciate what they have done. And the appreciation that we can give to these people is to pay money for whatever service they have brought to us and then um, they get rewarded for that. So now the person has identified a problem or a challenge or an opportunity. He has organized limited resources and created a solution or a product. And then he goes to look at a specific target market, a specific target market, a specific group of people, a specific group of customers who need this particular product. Once this person is able to exchange this package to this product or solution to this tar target market, and then they reward him with money or anything of that sort, this person has created a solution, has become an entrepreneur. And I'm going to give you an example to explain this as well. And then we shouldn't forget that whilst the person is trying to do all this, trying to organize the limited resources to take, adv take, take advantage of the opportunity, and even where they are trying to even solve the problem, there's risk. It is risky. 
is highly uncertain that whatever you are trying to put across would work. So in a nutshell, what is entrepreneurship? Basically, number one, it, it, it involves a process. And that process involves, number one, somebody identifying a problem or identifying a challenge or identifying an opportunity. Number two, once the person has been able to organize and uh, identify these uh, opportunities or whatever it is, this person now goes ahead to look for resources that he can use those resources to create a product or to create a solution to solve that problem. And then once you have been able to so uh, create that product or service or solution, he must package it in a way that the target market will need it. And once the target market takes this product and they are happy with it and they solve their problem that they had, this person who created this solution must be rewarded. And we, and we reward them in terms of money, in terms of fame, in terms of popularity and all that. There are many ways that we reward these people. But we shouldn't forget that in an attempt to do all these three things or go to all these steps, it is risky. This idea, this solution, this package can backfire. If it backfires, what are you going to do? You might have lost your whole time, might have lost your energy. You'll be frustrated. People will laugh at you. Your friends will think that you say you go do them. Okay, do I make you see. Now here are you not knowing nothing to do. And there are people who have gone through this stage and they went into, they, they became sick, they've never recovered. There are people who have been actually gone mad. They've never recovered. There are people who got hypertension as a result of the failure of their business. Their fire, their business, their warehouse was on fire. They called them, TK, your warehouse is on fire. Anyway, God forbid, it shouldn't happen to me. TK, your warehouse is on fire. And as soon as the person heard it, his person says, oh my God, as soon as the person said that hypertension sets in, and that's it. After today, they haven't recovered. So even though entrepreneurship is sweet, entrepreneurship is nice, it's a way that we can all go on, it's a, it's a, it's a path that we can all journey on to become somebody that extra that we want to be. But again, don't forget that it is risky. That is why you guys are being introduced into this course so that we can look, look at what are the risks involved in becoming an entrepreneur and what can you do to minimize them? So because once we know the problem associated with becoming an entrepreneur, then we can now find solutions to those things. Okay, so this is what we're going to do this semester. This is the crust of what we're going to do. Who is this entrepreneur? Who, what are their characteristics? Why are they trying to become entrepreneurs? What are the challenges, challenges of becoming an entrepreneur? Number two, how do we find business opportunities? How do we identify what we can do? What are the problems that we, are, we, can, we have seen that we want to take, transform that into a solution? How do we look for resources? How do we look for money to start these businesses? And once you have found this money, how do we market this product to our target market? How do we get our customers or our target market paying us money for this? The reward that we get. And how do we minimize all the risks that are associated with this journey called entrepreneurship? This is what we are saying. This is what I'm talking about. Any questions after this point, please? Please raise your hands. I'll allow you to speak and then we'll make any comments or questions that you want to ask as I move on with this. Any questions, any comments? All right, so with this very simple explanation, I would like, okay, um, Rita, please go ahead. Rita? Rita, please go ahead. Rita, your hand is up. Can you please go ahead or mute yourself and please speak? Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Rita. Um, sir, please, with the understanding of the entrepreneurship, eh, um, let's say um, we spoke about intra, which is the IN. And let's say that like in the nursing setting, our nursing setting, um, you are able to identify the problem. Um, let's say a um, teenage pregnancy. You get the people involved, then um Per the percentage of the increase, then at the end of the day, you are able to bring it down. You have been able to identify the problem, get organized some resources, which are human beings like your colleagues. You come in, go into the situation, and at the long run, the thing comes down. That's the decrease. Then maybe um, you have been motivated. So in this case, you no. Know, um, do we say you are a uh, is intra entrepreneurship or inter because you are being employed by the government here okay very good point so now if the intra becomes an intra 
when you are whatever solution that you are offering to the organization it's inside the organization so for example if you got an idea like you are saying that the that the people in the community i mean you are just doing your midway fee stuff but along the line you realize that there are too many young girls coming a senior pregnancy it's a worry to you and it, it will surprise you to know that there are a lot of people who have worked in that organization for a very long time but none of these people have identified this issue about the fact that a lot of young girls are coming in and pregnant. But you alone notice that, no, this is, this is going on. And you have sat down, you have thought to it carefully. And then you come out with a, with a proposal to your boss or your whatever, your team, and say, Charlie, we are getting too many young ladies getting pregnant in this community. Can we go ahead and just go into the community and then educate them on this? And then people say, oh, wow, let's go ahead and do it. But you go ahead and you, you, either you pass or you fail. The fact that you were working for somebody else and this idea that you got was generated inside the organization and you use the resources in the organization to go and solve the problem in the community, you are an intrapreneur. So because you are doing it in name of the organization. But let's say that you, you notice this opportunity or this problem you have seen in the community, but you said, no, let me just build an NGO, a small business, a non-profit organization let me, let me go and register it. And let me, at my spare time, when I've closed from work, I'm going to go to churches. I'm going to go to the community. I'm going to create a club in the community that I'm going to educate my young girls about avoidance of teenage pregnancy. When you do that, you will become an entrepreneur, ENT. Because at this point, your objective is not to do it for the organization or inside the organization. You have decided to create a business out of the problem that you have seen. That doesn't belong to your organization. In that case, you become ENTRE, entrepreneur. But if you did it inside the organization, with your staff, with the resources that are available with you inside the organization, it is intra. Because it is intra because that's where one of your bosses will say, oh, wow, Rita, you're doing so well. Why are you doing this? Oh, so based on my record, I noticed that a lot of girls are coming in here pregnant and blah, blah, blah. So I just want to see how I can help them out. Okay, we're giving a vehicle. Take this car for yourself and go every week to go and educate these people. This is entrepreneurship. This is entrepreneurship. Thank you very much, sir. Very good. Any more questions, please? Let's clarify this basis before I move on, because if this foundation is not laid correctly, we might struggle maybe along the line to understand some of the concepts. Any, any questions, any comments? All right, I would like anybody to raise their hands to explain to me what, what your understanding is so far as far as entrepreneurship is concerned, or maybe the difference between entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. All right, so Jacqueline is asking, please, what about nurse and nurse selling food at the hospital, which is outside the profession? If the, the, the restaurant you have created or the food you are selling is not for the organization, you are an entrepreneur, ENT. This, the profit comes to you, it doesn't go to the organization. So once the profit comes to you and the business is registered in your name, you are an entrepreneur, not an intrapreneur. All right. Okay, Mama Becky, please go ahead. Hello, sir. Yes, Becky. With the entrepreneurship, is when an individual owns a business and this individual identifies the need or the problem that she in a society. So that's what, how I understand the uh, uh, entrepreneurship. And with the intra, the entrepreneurship it is when um someone is being em employed in a an organization so you are working for the organization so you are within the organization while doing a business so that's my understanding very good becky thank you very much i think you understand it very well now okay so that that's the basic uh, hmm. I keep muting people and they keep on muting themselves. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody wants to try? All right. Uh, Rita, please go ahead again. Hello, sir. Yes, please. My understanding um, entrepreneurship is like you owning your own business and then you are able to identify certain problems in the society. You are able to um, the problem that you are able to identify, you organize and get the needed things that you need for that problem to be solved. 
and at the end you are being rewarded. And then for the intra, you are working for somebody. Example, like government workers, you are being employed to work, but you are working as if the work is for you. You are working as if, um, um, okay, you are working as if the work is for you. And at the end, you bring out uh, good outcomes too and being awarded in addition. Thank you. Very, very good. Thank you very much, um, Rita. All right. So I see another Rita. Okay, I'll call this Rita Ya. Ya Rita. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Bye. you, sir. Um, please, can I say that the difference between this uh, intra, the differences between them is like, um, um, like the, uh, the differences between them is one is employed and then the other is you doing it yourself. Uh, at the end of it all, they both you solve so like you give a solution in both of them and then you are rewarded in both of them but can we say that the difference in them is one you are employed by someone and the other one um you are doing it by yourself very good and that's a very good example sister yeah that's a very good example as well so first basis as you have said one the intra is employed by somebody else Number two, the entrepreneur is employed by himself. That's the baseline. I like that, that explanation. Okay. Uh, Venice, please go ahead. Okay, no, Venice, drop, the, drop your hand. Thompson, Rhoda. Yeah, please, I wanted to ask a question. Um, uh, let's say you go for a workshop, okay, and you are uh, educated on um, checking all pregnant women on... Uh, they are glucose level, okay? So you you come and you, what the information that you were given, you come to impact onto your, your department or to the hospital. So from then on, you encourage them and then they come up with the uh, machine, the glucometer, okay? And as the unit uses the glucometer, it brings in income to the facility. So what do you term this one? This is a very clear example of entrepreneurship. This is a clear example of entrepreneurship because you have brought an innovative solution to a problem that you had already in the, in the, in the office. And even there, it's even generating revenue for the, for, the, for the organization. This entrepreneurship, very good example, Rhoda. Okay, and if uh, I, I did not impart the knowledge, but I bought the machine, and the unit is just using it for its own subtopics. If, if you bought the machine yourself, if I tell me, why? You are using it for the organization. That's intrapreneur because not the money comes to you. If the money comes to you, yeah. 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 If you bought the machine, you didn't, you didn't talk, you didn't educate the people in the organization, that's fine. But you bought the machine with your own money and the money is coming to you. That is illegal. So I don't know where I can place that as, as being entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship. But the point is that if you bought the machine for the organization, the money is coming to you and it's legal that you're doing it, it's entrepreneurship. It's also entrepreneurship because it's a business you're generating for yourself. But if you bought a machine and the machine is being used for generating revenue for the department, then it's entrepreneurship because the money comes to the, the organization. And I'm sure eventually you may want to even pay back, uh, uh, take your money that you use for them to buy the machine yourself. That's entrepreneurship. But if the money comes to you as an individual, and if it's allowed, you are an entrepreneur. So for example, we have a, we have a fund that we, that we give to all of you. If I sell the hand out to you, Oh my. If I sell the handout to you and the money comes to me, if it's allowed for me to do this, if this is entrepreneurship because I'm making money, I've come up with a solution. I know oh, my students will need um, handouts. It's a problem for them. So I sit down and I craft and use my limited resource to create a book, a handout for you. And then I sell it to you. And then you pay me money for it. And I make some small profit on that one. I'm an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. But if the school calls me and says, TK, 
this course that you're teaching, the students will need handouts. So please create a handout and then let us print it for you. Let us sell it to the students and then we'll give you some commission on that. It is intrapreneurship. I'm doing it for the school, but not for myself. Okay. All right. Good. Let's talk to um, Sewa. Sewa, please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Yes, please. Please, so I wanted to ask a question. This seems everybody is talking about reward, reward. Is it necessary that someone who is working as an uh, entrepreneur is acting as entrepreneur will definitely be awarded? Since uh, I'm just hearing reward, reward, it's like the basis of everything is reward. Good, good question. Whichever tangent that you take, there'll be some form of reward. Whichever direction that you keep, you take. Either you take the path of entrepreneurship or you take the path of intrapreneurship, both sides will be rewarded because the beautiful thing about these paths are that both will lead you to bring innovative solutions to problems that people are facing in whichever direction that you go. And they're going to love the solution. But the reward that you get might not necessarily always be money. So for example, for the intrapreneur, it could be in the form of promotion. It could be a special bonus. It could be even a party in the person's name. It could be, it could be something. It could be either financial or non-financial rewards for the intrapreneur. Again, for the entrepreneur, the ENTR, it could also even mean that it might be a reward, but not necessarily be financial. There are people who have set up NGOs to take care of orphans. These guys are not being paid directly, maybe technically for the sake of making serious profit. They are doing it because they want to do it to help other people because maybe this person was an orphan and God's grace has become very good in society. And you also see a lot, a lot of orphans around. So he tried to build an NGO, a non-profit or making organization to take care of orphans. This person is not making money like somebody else would make if they were collecting money to, to do that. But the reward the person gets is the fame, is the popularity, is the joy the person has by taking care of orphans. So rewards can be financial and non-financial. But both ways, you will be, definitely be rewarded. If you're not rewarded, it means that your solution is not good enough. If your solution is good enough, definitely you have to be rewarded either financially or non-financially. Any more? Esther. Esther, please sir, go ahead. Sir, please, good morning. Good morning, Esther. Esther, please, I want to share my experience to differentiate between the intra and then the intra. Um, I was one, after my schooling after my national service i was working with a private hospital and i found out that we they have a lot of continental clients but they were not coming so i decided to buy yam yam phone so that we can use to call them later the management found out that it was a good decision so they provided us with monthly credits so from then, we started gaining a lot of uh, clients. So they decided to increase my salary. Instead of after national service, they have an amount being paid. But among my colleagues, mine was increased. So I can term that, uh, that one as an intra. Very good. And after my posting, I was posted at a, a place where there's nothing like boutique. So I decided to get myself a small one to establish my business with ladies wear and which is fetching me money monthly more than my salary. So I can call that as an entry. Very so, good. A, yeah, very good. This is a very good example, um, Esther. Yes. Very good, very good example. So you see the little effort that you, so the little effort that you brought into the hospital, look at what happened to you. I mean, a very typical example of entrepreneurship is what happened to Joseph in the palace of um, Pharaoh. Joseph brought an innovative solution to a problem that Pharaoh had. Pharaoh had a dream he could not interpret. And then the, Joseph find an innovative solution, which is the interpretation of the dream to Pharaoh. And what was the reward for, uh, uh, Joseph got? Joseph was, was given, uh, the only thing that he did not get was, was, to get, was not to get the, the whole kingship himself. Got everything, including even a wife. A wife was dashed to Joseph. That is a, that's a side of entrepreneurship. That's how we can explain entrepreneurship. And that's what Esther just said. But entrepreneurship is when you actually are outside of the, whatever you're doing is for you and it's outside of the organization. 
But the challenge is that please never cheat your employer when it comes to you being an int- be, you being an employee and trying to start your entrepreneurial venture. Never cheat your employer. God will not bless you in that case. That's it. All right. So I see um, uh, Linda says, what if you identify that there is um, fistula in the community? I'm sure fistula is one of these your diseases. Fistula in the community and you notify your public nurse you notify your public nest to help you get the, the problem solved. This is entrepreneurship. You identify the problem, you organize a resource, which is a human being called the public nest, to go out and do this for you. This is entrepreneurship straight away. Very good one. I don't understand this one. Please do stick in why. Those talking, why? Okay, okay. Social media language, I understand it now. <laughs> All right, so let me see what else we have in our chat box. Um, I can't hear, please. Is it me alone? No, I'm sure the others can hear. So please read your, go off and join again. It could be the network. Uh, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. Uh, what else do we see here? Please, what's, what's, the difference be, what's the difference in the spelling? The spelling is that the... the Entrepreneurship is E N T R E P R no E N T R P R E N E U R S H I P. Entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, whatever. The intrapreneur, which is inside the organization, is I N T R A P R E N E U R. Intrapreneurship. All right. Okay. Anybody, uh, I see two hands again. Uh, I don't know if you, you raise your hands again, but is it the old one or the new one? So it's the new one. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, please, I wanted the entrepreneurship. What if you own your own business and then an organi- organization decided that, okay, because of what we are doing, I would like to take the organ or involve myself or for, for the government. And at the end of the day, you didn't leave it for the organization, though they are helping you out. Is it through your own as an uh, entrepreneurship? Thank you. It, it depends on what the arrangement was. Initially, you are an entrepreneur. You were running your own business, and then somebody said, please come and join me. I'm taking your business into my organization. Now, depending on what, what form, that, form that you take, we cannot determine what the nature of the ownership is. But before the company asked you to bring it, it was entrepreneurship, E-N-T-R-E. Okay. All right. Helena, please go ahead. Hello, sir. Good morning. Yeah. Please, I want to understand the whole show. Like, I want to set an uh, a scenario whether I understand the whole thing. I'm a, I'm a midwife, and uh, I'm, I'm taking care of a clinic. So every month, the drugs they, uh, they give to me, I have to do an account. Please go ahead. I'm saying breaking. that I'm saying that I'm a midwife, yeah, and uh, I'm taking care of a certain facility or sub district. So the drugs mm. they uh, they always bring to the facility every month. You need to do an account to the office, and I'm I'm able to start a new business like container aside from the hospital ones. So in this case, can I say that the Container that I set for uh, selling items is the intra. intra uh, who, who, this, who, owns the, who owns the container? The entrepreneurship. Uh huh. And uh, who owns the container? Government. I own it. You own the container. Aside from the government work. So, Helena, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hello, Helena. Yes. yes. I'm asking if the container that you have, who owns, who who does it belong to? It's it's for me. The stocks in the container, who does it belong to? It's for me. I sell the those items. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me just answer my questions for me. And okay. when you sell the items in the container, who owns the money? It's me. This is entrepreneurship. In intra. Oh. No, no, E N T R E. E N T. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Because uh-huh. I was a little confused. <laughs> no, no. 
once everything belongs to you, because the reason why you, you set up the container was because you find a problem and you set up the container to supply something to the people in the area. Yes. So now, once you have done that, it's, it's, it's for you. So it's entrepreneur, E N T R E. Okay. 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 Yep. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Oh, so yes, please. Okay. Sir, please, I think the problem is coming from the pronunciation because we are conversant with entrepreneurs and your pronunciation is causing a, lot, um, a little bit of distraction. That is why people are not getting it. Okay, pronounce, pronounce both words. Let me see how you pronounce it. The first one is entrepreneurship and the second one is entrepreneurship. Okay, so that's fine. That's, that's, so we, that's we are used to the entrepreneurship. And the one you are saying entrepreneurship, that one is, I think that one is causing the problem because we are used to the entrepreneurship. Okay. The, the right pronunciation from the, if you check on the dictionary, the right pronunciation is entrepreneurship. Again, all of us are pronouncing it not correctly. But again, based on how the, it sounds in our ears, we can take it and, then, and understand it that way. I'm very comfortable to say entrepreneur. And somebody say entrepreneur, like all of us are saying. So let's take it as it is. Let's just so find please, is it a French word? It's actually a French word. Sure. The original name is the original meaning of entrepreneurship was entre. Entre means in between. So the entrepreneur was supposed to be a betweener between customers and the business. So the original yeah. meaning of entrepreneurship is in French. That's why we are all finding difficulty in trying to pronounce this. So that's why I keep I keep, I keep giving you the, the the solution. No, if you spell it O N is wrong. O N is there's nothing no word called O N. Even though it's pronounced something like that, it is not O N T. It is E N T R. Very good. <laughs> All right. So so let me spell it for you. The person who runs his own business, the person who finds his own opportunity or problem and finds his own solution and builds a business around that is called E-N-T-R-E-P-R-E-N-E-U-R-S-H-I-P. The person who works in organization and finds innovative solutions to the problems in the organization and helps the organization to grow, to become bigger, is spelled I-N-T-R-E-P-R-E-N-E-U-R-S-H-I-P. N E U R S H I P, intrapreneurship. So please take that spelling and then pronounce as you want it to be. Okay. All right. So somebody also says that sir, please, if an employee of a certain firm decides to open some business in his own name in a different location and gaining profit for him or herself, but still remains with the organization that employed him. So who is this person? Somebody give an answer for this one. There's the, there's the question in the chat box. Who is this person? How do we call this person? Intra. No, he's not intra. He's working all right. The business this person is running is not inside the organization. It's your, the money comes to your own pocket. So there's no way we can become an intrapreneurship. Intrapreneur, no. <laughs> You're working. So let's take me for example. I went full time at Garden City University College. And then I've been able to build my own consulting firm that I work in with my friends. Now, even though I still work full time at Garden City, as far as my consulting firm is concerned, we are E N T R R E, entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. Even though I work for Garden City full time, no, I'm not intra, I'm entre because. The solution that I'm offering is not for Garden City, it's for we ourselves. But if I if I stop this whole consulting firm and, and I take that consulting firm to, to be inside for Garden City, I give it to Garden City and I see where for Garden City it becomes an intra because I'm solving a solution, I'm solving a problem in the organization. And that's the same thing you're asking here. The fact that you are working for somebody else and then you have your own business doesn't mean that you are intra. No, no, no. If the business belongs to the organization and the money goes to the organization, then that becomes an intra. But this way, the question you're asking now means that the money belongs to you. The business belongs to you. So you go and do your 8 to 5 p.m. job or 2 to whatever job that for the hospital. And then you're, you're at your own spare time, when you're, working, when you're not working for the organization, you go into your own business. This is 
entrepreneurship e n t r e p r entrepreneurship very good all right um, augusta augusta please go ahead you could be wait for it wait for it i don't know this one please um augusta your hand is up please go ahead hello augusta Augusta, your hand is up. Should yes, I go? Sir, please. I want to yes, come please. in. Yeah. So, uh, my sisters that are confused, please, let's help ourselves. Um, what sir is actually trying to mean is that just as we all own our private works, like makeup artists, we are doing um, barbering shop, those things, just as we are all owning our our work um, that is when the online guys come in they say that you 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 interview they say that they are entrepreneur that is what the entrepreneurship mean in our own term entrepreneur and, and the intra comes in just as we are all nurses and midwives that we are working in our facility because the facility is not ours and it's government owned and we are working in the facility that is when the intra comes in thank you well, I don't know where the confusion is actually coming from. Uh, yes, thank you very thank much. Thank you very um, much, sister. We are now understanding. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so please explain to me how you understand it. Uh, who spoke just now? Explain to me how you understand this. Sir, which one, please? No, not you. What? The person who just said, the person who said, I understand. I want to be very clear that the way, I want to see how you understand it. Sir. Yes, sir, please. I understood it like, sir, I understood it like, I'm doing something on my own. The money comes to me. I created it like I just I don't know I don't even know how to, I created it and I'm I'm doing it myself. The money comes to me. It doesn't go to anybody. That is entrepreneurship. But uh, like we are nurses, we are working for the government and all the money goes to the government. Whatever we give it to the government. That one is entrepreneurship. That is how I understand it. Okay. Uh, all right, very good. Hello, uh, Elizabeth. Hello. Yes, please. Um, Salima. Hey. Yes, please. Hello, sir. Good morning. Yes, please go ahead. Please, can I ask you? Yes. No, if okay. I mean, I think we don't understand that. That'd be difficult. So we can't do that. I think um, we've been explaining in English and people are still having challenges with it. So, <laughs> okay, try it and let's see. Try it, try it and let's see. With the entrepreneurship, they mean that I'm not a And no, no, me can why no I establish you business? No. So, every profit that they be on a while would be. No one has a share in it. One now I establish you are doing. One now make you profit, just like we run businesses in our houses. Profit never had you. But with the entrepreneurship, media, you work for someone, you work under someone. So with that one, even if you have the idea now, will employ them and they make you profit. No, everything goes to the employer. No. But at the end of the day, no, 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 based on who efforts now to see me and maybe our reward you in such a kind. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. Please, all those who are still disturbing with their phones and you are you are at home, please. This is not fair. This is not very fair at all. If you're in class, you're in class. If you're not in class, please just go off the off the class. I don't see why you should meet yourself and let your kids be disturbing everybody else. Okay, so let me try to attempt to explain, sum, summarize the game somehow for us to see. The entrepreneur, like you are saying, is the person who finds an individual who finds a problem and fixes the final innovative solution to the problem and then builds a business around that and the reward and the risk is on him or her. So I have found the problem, I'll find the solution. If I'm rewarded, the reward comes to me. If I fail and I lose the money, the failure issue comes on me. This entrepreneur, like the word you want to explain, I find it very difficult to pronounce it this way. But if I work in an organization 
And then I'm constantly looking for problems and constantly offering innovative solutions to solve the problem in the organization, to help the organization grow, to make the organization better, to get more customers for the organization, more patients for the organization, to make us more, make more money, to make sure everybody in the organization is happy. We are all working together. Everyone's excited and the business is growing. This is intrapreneur. Now, if you look at the example that our, our sister gave, she said that she came in as a national service person and by virtue of the fact that she brought an idea that you should call customers or call patients, the company or the hospital realized that, ah, this lady is doing something different. They started buying her credit. And more patients were coming in. So it means that the problem that was there already was that the hospital was not getting patients or the patient was, patients were not even happy. And then she found the problem. And then she found a solution and said, okay, can we be calling all our patients every single day? She got her own phone, innovative. And then when the hospital realized that she, the patients were not coming and he realized that she did that, the, the hospital said, okay, now please, can we buy you credit? Innovation. And then eventually when the service time was over, they no, not even before it was over. They gave her more money. They promoted her and they retained her in the hospital. This is entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship is when you work in somebody else's organization and then you behave as if the business is yours in such a way that everybody else will be happy and most importantly the business will be growing. There's a very clear difference between the two. Don't worry about the entrepreneurship. I will, I will come back to that once we find time to talk about the. Uh, there's some steps to become a very successful entrepreneur. You understand it better. So let's stay on the entrepreneurship, the E-N-T-R-E now, and then later we'll look at it. Okay? All right. Please, again, there's somebody still writing on the screen. This is not nice. My guys, we are all mature people. Why are you doing this? We are recording this to share it back for everybody else to use. And then you are doing this on the screen. It's not nice. Anyway. All right. Um, Elizabeth, please go ahead. Elizabeth, AJ, your hand is up. Please go ahead. All right. I see Hannah as well. Hannah. Yeah, sir. Yes, please. Um, interpret. Yeah. Please, who is still writing on the screen? This is not nice. Though. What is this? Someone is intentionally doing this. This is not nice, to be honest with you. All right. So now we have explained. Uh, so somebody should vol volunteer to read what you see on your screen. Who wants to read? I will read. OK, first please go ahead. Please go ahead. An entrepreneur is a person who sees an opportunity to serve and the person. Somebody else is reading. Who is no, an entrepreneur? Huh, please go ahead, uh, Faustina. An entrepreneur is a person who sees an opportunity to serve people in some way with a product or service that they want and need, and then is able to bring this product or service to the customer at a cost that is lower than the customer is able to pay. Good. So now if we're able to come up with a, with a product or service to solve a problem in terms of a product and the customer are able to pay for it, you are an entrepreneur. Let me give you examples. Maybe this will explain to us better. So in a nutshell, entrepreneurship is very simple. One is prosperity. Prosperity is found in, many, in making one. You are making life better. You are making life easier. You are making life faster. You're making life cheaper, and most importantly, you're making life very convenient. Anytime anybody is able to bring these five critical components to life or to a problem or to an opportunity, you become an entrepreneur, and then you'll be rewarded massively for it. You make life better by making improving upon existing solutions or maybe bringing a, a completely new solution. You make life easier by making sure people get to do things faster and things for them. You make life even cheaper. You make things cheaper for other people. And most importantly, if we're able to bring make things convenient for other people, eventually you are going to be rewarded. If you take this same thing to organizations, you become an entrepreneur. And definitely you may be reward, rewarded either financially or not financially for it. Okay, let's look at some examples. Who can describe what you see on the screen? Please raise your hands. 
Please raise your hands and let me see what you see on the screen. What do you see on the screen? Please raise your hands. Yes, um, um, Dauda, please go ahead. Please, it's a woman and the husband that are pounding. Very good. Is that a traditional way of eating food now these days? Was this a problem for us, um, Sarah? Hello, Sarah. Juliana, how, how can you describe the stress involved in this getting this food to eat? Sir, this is Sarah. Yes, yeah, Sarah, please go ahead. Sir, by pounding it. The pounding, it for, huh? Uh -huh. the pounding is stressful. Very good. Thank you very much. Now, somebody sits down and realizes that, oh, no, this is too stressful, especially today that many people want to eat for food any time in the day. He sits down and says, okay, now, can I bring an innovative solution to this problem? This food pounding issue would have caused us, uh, taken us almost two hours to get this done. But the person comes out with need for food. In five, ten minutes, you are done. This is the power of entrepreneurship. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. This is the power of entrepreneurship. Because this person realized that, yes, people want to eat for food, all right. People love for food, all right. But unfortunately, the stress that we go to to eat for food is too much. We can't do this. Because now, assuming that a husband is a medical doctor, a wife is a, is a nurse or a midwife, and then both of you go to work in the morning, come back home, everybody's exhausted. Who is now going to pound the fufu? Who is now going to peel the cassava? Who is now going to do all this for us before we eat our fufu? The person says, no, there can be a better solution to this. The person comes out, we need fufu. And is this person rewarded for it? Massively rewarded. I don't know how much it costs now to buy one. It's about 30 cents or something like that. Assuming this guy is able to sell uh, five, one million pieces every month, one million pieces of this pack every single month, and is making profit of one Ghana city per pack. Imagine just how much, how much profit they make per month. One million Ghana city's profit, money that they can chop, just like that. This is a power of entrepreneurship. So I, I, what I'm saying is that once you're able to find a solution, an innovative solution to a problem, you are in business and you are going to be rewarded for it. You become an entrepreneur. Find solutions to problems, you are going to be rewarded. Let's look at this one as well. Now, who is the gentleman that you see on the screen? I'm sure many of you have not seen me, so you might not see. It's me. The lady standing there is called Hamdia. Hamdia went to do his, do a national service in Tamil, no, in the one of the northern region uh, towns. And then during the period when she was teaching in the school, one of the primary schools, she realized that at a point in time, a lot of the very brilliant ladies in the school don't come to school. So she find out, and then was, she was told that when these ladies menstruate during the period, they don't come because they don't even have power to take care of themselves. And when, if for any reason, they come to school and then they get their body, so, their, their, their dresses soiled, the boys will laugh at them. So they don't really even want to come to school at all. And this lady was worried because she found that these ladies were very, very brilliant. So what did she do? She found an innovative solution to solve the problems of these ladies. She actually said that at some point in time, she was trying to use her national service money to buy parts for them, but she could not because the ladies were a lot. And how much at all are they paying national service? So she said that she produced a product. So the, I am the guy holding the, the pad there. She did what we call disposable sanitary pad. And then she adds a small bottle of Dettol into it, into a, a small pack. So a pack has six of these and then one small bottle of Dettol. And then she gave, started giving it, giving it to these young ladies gradually. And they began they started using it so they can reuse it somehow. And because of the daughter that was added, they would wash it and do all that and then use it again and all that. This event that you are seeing here was done at Golden Tulip in 2020. This lady was given 47,000 euros by, by SMV Ghana to buy machines, sewing machines, and all kinds of machines to produce 3 million pieces to go and distribute in the three northern regions. I'm asking you, are you sure this lady is going to use all the 47,000 euros? I don't think so. This is the power of entrepreneurship. She has found an innovative solution to the problem that young ladies were, were, were having. And because she was, she was able to find a solution to these people, she was rewarded, massively rewarded. That is the power of entrepreneurship. 
What solution are you finding to problems that you see around you? What problems have you seen? Or are you a complainer? Are you always complaining, complaining, complaining without finding a solution to it? Find a solution to the problems you are even complaining yourself about. And eventually, once you find a solution to it, you would definitely make some money out of this. That's Hamdia. I, I am witness to this. I was there when the lady was given the money, 47,000 euro by, by SNV. SNV is one of the, um, the social enterprise for the Holland Embassy. They gave her the money. Let me show you another example. Do we know this guy? What's, it, what's, it, what's his name? Anybody can mention his name? Lewin. Very good. Lewin. <laughs> I'm telling you, Lewin is one of the very successful entrepreneurs you see. Lewin doesn't have a product that he sells. Lewin is selling himself as a person and still making money. You know why? Because Lewin realized that his talent, his God-given talent that has been given to him is to make people happy, is to make people laugh. So he, he tapped into this talent that he has, went into movies, and to, today, Lewin doesn't have the degree that you and I have. I'm sure Lewin doesn't even have a JHS degree. I'm sure he doesn't have it. But I won't be surprised that Lewin may be richer than almost everybody on this call. What happened? Because Lewin find a problem with people, that people are sad, people are depressed, people are not happy. So what can I use my talent for as a human being that God has given me to make people happy? And that's it. This guy launched a program on TV called I Can't Think Far on UTV. And I'm told that in six weeks, he had 235,000 worth of sponsorship when he has never gone to look for sponsorship at all. You know why? Because this guy has made people so happy that anytime people see him, they are happy. And when they see him on TV, everybody wants to watch him, watch whatever he's doing. Today, he's rich. He solved societal problem with depression. He solved societal problem with sorrow. He solved societal, societal problem with people who are not happy. And as soon as he, he, he says something, you're happy. This is the power of entrepreneurship. He might, you might not sell a product, but you may use your talent to bring solutions to people and you're going to be rewarded for it. Interesting. How about Anama McBrown? Same thing. I'm sure Anama does not even have probably a first degree, maybe SHS or something like that. But look at her. She is rich. She's a brand ambassador for high sense. If I tell her how much money she's paid every month for being a brand ambassador for high sense, you guys will open your mouth. You probably will stop being a midwife or a nurse to become who you are. Again, Nanama doesn't sell a product. Look at how many billboards you see Nanama on. Look at how many products that Nanama has been put on. And every single product that he becomes an ambassador for, they pay her money. And they pay her very good money. Because she also found that she had a talent, a gift, that she can bring to society by making people happy, by representing brands. And by virtue of that, this lady, the American, will say, fucking rich. This is the power of entrepreneurship. So technically, entrepreneurship is just about you finding a product and selling. But I'll come to a point where I'll explain to you the difference between a product, you know, the difference between an entrepreneur and then a business owner. I'll come to explain that later on. But the point is that it's always possible for every single one of us to find a solution to something and get rewarded for it, period. Nanama can do this job for the rest of her life till she dies. Just represent the brands. That's it. What is yours? Think about it. How about this one you see as well? This, in fact, was another lady who came to one of the events that we had um, for SNV. This lady, again, her baby died when uh, the baby was nine months, no, six months. A little girl, she gave birth to a little girl, and the baby died at nine months. And then she was told that the baby died out of malaria. She got malaria. It wasn't treated properly and all that. And eventually, the person, the, the child died. And then she started asking, why did that happen? Say, well, mosquitoes, mosquitoes, mosquitoes. And then they explained to her that mosquitoes, uh, they, uh, when water collects in plastic waste and buckets and all that, it collects, it breeds mosquito. So she said that she was going to collect all plastic waste around her area and then turn it into something. So eventually turn those plastic waste into the, the bag that you see on the left. And then eventually she said, oh, she can also collect fun eyes, the fun milk products. She can collect those bags, those poly bags, and then transform them to a bag. That's the bag you're actually seeing. Do you know what happened to this lady? When she, when she presented one of these bags to fun milk, fun milk said, what a good idea. They set this woman up, bought all the machines she needed, got her a space to build a very good factory in the, in the North Industrial Area in Accra. And this woman is fully 
into the collection of plastic waste by Fanbulk and their products and then transforming them into this kind of product. That's the kind of bag you see on the screen. This woman is rewarded. She, she's finding a solution to a problem. You see problems all around you all the time, but are you finding a solution to them or are you just complaining about it? Find a solution to that and eventually you are going to get rewarded for it. I'll be giving you this example to explain to you the power of entrepreneurship. And I've told you before that I believe strongly deep down in my heart that the easiest, the fastest, and the surest way, the most sustainable way to get people out of poverty is to expose them to the power of entrepreneurship. Because once you expose them to the power of entrepreneurship, they will find some way somehow to find innovative solutions to problems and eventually build some business out of that and get rewarded for it. But again, I can't do it for you. You have to do it yourself. Okay? Let's see another example. You can please ask me any questions as we go along so that I can explain them to you as well. Okay, so I see we're trying to pronounce the word and spell the word in the chat box. Okay. Yeah. So can we say the difference is mainly uh, based on ownership? Yes, that could be. I see that in, in, the, in the chat box. That's true. Okay. Uh, please position yourself. Okay. All right. That's another one that I saw in the chat box. Any questions so far up to this point? Any questions, any comments? All right, so I see, see another one. All right, so some of you are trying to answer the questions in the chat box for me. Thank you very much as we go along with the discussion. All right, great. So if you are getting any confused, you can type in the chat box. We'll see it and read it and probably explain it, explain it for you as well. All right, um, Hannah, go ahead. Sir, please, with the entrepreneurship, we know that the person is very dedicated. Hello, Hannah. Came for someone. So what is, uh, is not? Hello. Yes, please repeat. Um, your line was breaking. Okay, I said with the entrepreneur, we know that um someone is working for uh, someone else or for maybe a, a, a government worker also, and then the person is very dedicated. And I want to know what if you are working for someone and you are not dedicated. You don't do, you go to work like you're a nurse, you go and then you are pressing your phone, you are not dedicated. That one, how do we call that person? By an employee, simple. Oh, okay. You're not doing, you're not bringing any value to the organization. You are just, you are just there. You're even wasting your time. Even if I was the boss, I'll fire you because you're wasting everybody's time. That person is a pure employee, typical government worker. You get it. But the moment this person changes her mind, and say, no, I have to do something extra to improve my work, to improve my work, to get, make my patients better, to work, work in synergy with my other colleagues to make sure that everybody who comes here is happy. That's entrepreneurship. That's, that makes a big difference. Okay? All right. Thank you. Now, how about this? Okay, Rebecca, go ahead. Okay, so my, my concern is that with the innovative issue, I think if you can help us out, I think that with the challenges that we face in that, sometimes you are doing that, so you don't have the, do you are just doing it, but you don't have the enthusiasm of doing it. So at the end of, and don't get someone to support you. So at the end of the day, you do something small and that ends it. For example, with the quality back waste disposal or like that. So it may be this person has gotten someone to support from the beginning a little bit. I realize the case in some of our villages, it's like you do the things my own. People even discourage you. So if you can help us, it don't matter how discouraged it is, if you can still go ahead and then how after we do it, how does it show it of like display for people to see it and then it, maybe someone can also take it from there and support. So, good. Very good. That's why we are in this call. And I'm going to show all the ways to do that. Everything that you're doing right now is a matter of how do you expose it? How do you get people to know about it? That comes in when we talk about marketing, okay? So stick with me, we, we, are, we, are, we are in good hands. We'll get to that point as well. Now look at this one. We see a lot of these car tire waste everywhere else. Now somebody sees this as a problem because these tires would collect water, would breed mosquito and cause all kinds of problems uh, in our society. Somebody takes these car tires and transforms them into this kind of nice chairs. Isn't that beautiful? This is the power of entrepreneurship. They are beautiful. 
This set you are seeing here is 1,900, almost 2,000 Ghana cities. But this person goes to collect all the ties for free. But even though she's collecting them for free, she's transforming them into something usable for everybody else to use. She's solving problems and people are rewarding them for it. I know this lady as well. We worked for her and then she's one of our clients. Solving societal problems and being rewarded for it. How about this one? We see this everywhere, everywhere. This, this, this is a nuisance. This is dirty. This is disgusting. This is what somebody has done. People collect these bottles and turn them into chairs and beds. This is the power of innovation. This is the power of creativity. This is the power of entrepreneurship. If we're able to do this, solve societal problems, eventually you'll get rewarded for it. Like our sister said, it doesn't, I'm telling you, this is not an easy journey. I'm telling you, I'm going to show you a lot of things. It's not simple as I'm saying it. I'm going to talk, tell you about my consulting firm. It's taken me eight years to have come this far. So even though this person has collected these bottles and turned them into this beautiful chair you are seeing here, this person might have struggled. But persistence, yeah. persistency yeah. and then staying in the game and making sure that you are still there all the time to get this would get you the result <laughs> one. Okay. All right. So you may ask me questions, raise your hands as we go along so that I can answer them as we move on. Let's watch this video. Please, um, Let's, oh, these plastic bottles. Can you did you hear my did you hear the sound? Did you hear the sound that I played, please? Yes, sir. yes, sir. yes, sir. yes sir. Okay. Can I hear you. So let's watch it. Oh, these plastic bottles. Hey, don't throw that away. Why? Are you recycling? I'm going to turn this into money, not recycling them. But how? Money? Yes. A lot of money. You will be surprised with the amount of money that I will make. Give me my bottles. You are not throwing them away. There is another way to make money with this, not recycling them. Now I'm going to show you. The first thing you have to do is this. A hole in the cap? Exactly. Now the hole is done. Now in this part here, we are going to cut it like a funnel, okay? And then we place it like this. We are going to make a lot of money. Okay. And this is the way we are going to make money? Watch this till the end and you will see. Look, I'm going to use this string. This is a cotton string, but it can be anything made from cotton. You can strip an old t-shirt. And what you have to do is to insert the string on the hole. You see that's... Yes, please. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, who was talking? Somebody was speaking. Okay, please go ahead and listen. Oh, you haven't spent a dime. We are going to do this only with things that we have at home. Bottles, cotton strings, or old t-shirts. This is for the okay, ones who like to make money. Take yeah, a look. Let me see. Yes. Insert the string on the cap. I'm going to leave it like this, okay? Aha. Uh -huh. The next thing we are going to need is a little bit of soil. We can take it from the backyard. Or we can buy a little, this is cheap. And you see that I still haven't spent a dime. And now I'm going to put it here. Yes. The soil is very cheap. But we can put it in the backyard. If you don't have any, you can buy some. And now we have to leave the bottle just like this, okay? Aha. Uh -huh. And the string goes like this? Exactly. And see how it reaches the bottom here. The next thing we are going to use here is this. What's this? Lettuce seeds. They were a couple of cents only. Now we do this with our finger and we place it right here. We are going to use a few lettuce seeds. We will place them right here. Ah, uh, okay. But I still don't know what is that string for? The string? Aha. Uh -huh. This string is the big secret because this will make the automatic irrigation. That's why it starts here passes through the funnel and goes to the bottom. You can travel or go on vacations and only need to water them once. So it will go from the bottom from here to the soil. Ah, uh, okay, so the water goes up over the string? Exactly, now you know why we use the string for? Now I know. To make the automatic irrigation. We don't have to be here to do so. So we are going to put a little bit of water here. This has to be filtered water. It has to reach almost to the cap of the bottle. Since our seeds are already here, I'm going to put some drops of water here also. 
to moisten them a little. To activate them, those drops will activate the seeds. So, do you know what will happen now? No. Now we are going to take this here, and we will place it in a well-ventilated spot. It can be, for example, here. A well-ventilated spot. Okay, I understand. And you know what I will do now? No. I only need to wait two months, and this will burst out of lettuce here. Really? Yes, we will have a lot of lettuce pots here. So, see what will happen after two months. We will have all this here. Wow, how beautiful. Do you see this here? Yeah. It will be like this after two months. Look at the leaves, how healthy they are. Remember what I told you about the secret? Yes, the string is there. The water goes over the string here. Now, take a look at how you are going to make money with this. Wow, how beautiful. Look here, look what happens after three months. Do you see how they look? Very interesting. The secret is here. Look, the string takes the water from the bottom to the top of the bottle. Yes. And down again. That's fantastic. It makes the automatic irrigation so you can travel or go on vacation and no need to worry about this. This filtered water will be self-irrigated. Come here to see the leaves. Look how healthy and beautiful they are. The lettuce, it's very beautiful. Very nice. So, how do you make money with this? We have thousands of seeds in a single pack, so you can make a big plantation at home. And you can sell them. You don't need to buy them anymore. You can sell them to the whole neighborhood. It's a very nice way to make money. And the investment is minimum. With a single pack of seeds, you can do all this. And it's not expensive at all. And the best thing is that this is very healthy. It has no agrotoxics or fertilizers. We only need the water with a string, and it costs nothing is the best advice you can get to make money and save money. Look how beautiful they are. We always have lettuce at home. We just have to put the seeds here and they irrigate themselves. You can travel, you can go out. And this is the result after two months. Look how beautiful they are. We have lettuce for all year round. Is the best tip you can find on the internet. Please share this video. All right, interesting. All right, what, what thought you get out of that? Please raise your hands and talk to me. Please raise your hands if you uh, want to share any thoughts with us. Interesting, I'm seeing the chat box. Okay, please go ahead. I see one hand, okay. Any thoughts? What did you see? What, what inspires you about this? What is entrepreneurship about what you just saw? Who wants to try? What is entrepreneurship about what you just saw? The video you just watched. Okay, so I'm seeing very interesting, very innovative. I will try it. Please try it at home. I tried it. I tried it. It worked. I'm telling you. I love it. Thank you. Wow, that's nice. Good. Interesting. All right. So this is what we call entrepreneurship. I mean, how do you find innovative solutions to problems? Of course, there are people who can start it big. And there are people who can start it small and eventually grow it to make it big. And I'm going to share with you my personal story as we go along with this. Okay. All right. Now, what do we see here as well? Another example of innovation, another example of finding innovative solutions to problems. What you see here is a very typical waste that you see when you go to the seamstress and the tailors. The, you take your materials to them to sew a shirt or some, whatever for you, and then what, they'll cut all the pieces and the rest, they throw away, they go and burn it. And in fact, when they burn this, it affects the soil, it affects climate, it affects the water bodies. Yeah. Okay. Somebody sit down and then transform yeah. all yeah. these materials that we are going yeah. to throw yeah. away, yeah. or the, all the materials are going to burn them to affect our, our, the soil, the climate, into this beautiful wall. So the, somebody goes to collect these waste and cut them into nice pieces, and then you can decorate a wall in your home or in your office. In fact, the guy who does it, this is his office. This is the guy. That's, the, that's, the, that's one of the offices, the, the office that he has. You see the background? is all these small, small pieces of cloth that has been cut to design this wall. This is finding innovative solutions to problems. I'm sharing these very petty, small, small ideas with you because I want to start thinking from this level. How do you look at situations around you so as small as they are and eventually transform them into a business? In fact, the water you see at the back of this guy, he said it cost the person a thousand dollars to do this. The material, he doesn't buy them. Probably we might just buy a pair of scissors, buy some glue, and that's it. The rest is just innovation. The rest is creativity. So now that somebody has been able to transform totally the, the material, the waste material we're going to burn, into this innovative world that we see here. How about this? This one too is also another innovation. Somebody collects plastic uh, waste bottles, bottles that we're going to throw away. 
You know, recently there are a lot of bottles that when you drink after taking a drink, the, the bottle is thrown away. So instead of we taking them to recycle or whatever it is, somebody takes these bottles and decorate them to these very beautiful, nice bottles that you see on the screen. This person too, I know, she's one of our clients. See what he has written on this love. So imagine that you get this person to design this love bottle for you and you go and put it in your husband's office or you put it in your home. You can write anything or thing at all. These four bottles you are seeing here is 500 Ghana cities. Somebody says it's expensive, but I say it's expensive because you don't see the value in what you are seeing. The, the value you are seeing is the beauty, is the decor that it brings to home. It's the freshness, it's the finest that these bottles, these bottles will bring to your home. You know, so this is what we talk, talk about, this is what we talk about about entrepreneurship. Now let me talk about me. If you are enjoying this class, please give me a yes in the chat box. If you think this is going to dramatically help you to start some business by the side, please give me a yes in the chat box. 